Hello, my name is Robert Dean Steele, and this is your July 9th time and place of prayer. We're going to open our time, and then we're going to be looking at some wonderful scriptures and things that we can pray about today. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit. Thy 
that's the cry that we should have every single day, that we would give every moment of our lives to the Lord with that response today. I want to invite you to a time and place of prayer, and together we're going to pray some powerful things. Now, of course, the reason they're powerful is because the Lord himself is standing behind it. So, Father, thank you today. In this moment, we're first of all, Lord, going to submit ourselves completely and totally to you. You know, we're always reminded in Matthew 6, 33, that if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything we're looking for will be added unto us. Lord, I'm so grateful for the many biblical examples that you give us, Lord, when it comes to seeking your face. When, when I think about Lydia, for example, where Paul is in the community of Philippi, and <clears throat> excuse me, he meets a woman named Lydia. She is down by the river, and uh, she is, of course, you know, a merchant and also as well a business in woman. But the Bible says that the Lord opened up her heart towards what Paul was saying. Father, that's what we want to have, is we want to have an open heart. We want to have a heart that is following after you. It was Jesus who said in Matthew 22, 37 to 40, that we are to love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. And we are to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, Lord, I'm always reminded about the fact that, Lord, when we choose to love you with every fiber of our being, something beautiful, something magical, something wonderful happens. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is that, Lord, you heal our hearts. Now, Father, before we came to know you, we were subject to all kinds of things. In fact, we were following the prince and the power of the air. Every thought, every word, every deed, every attitude, every motive was completely and totally subjected to him. And whatever horse hockey he was feeding us at the time, he knew exactly where our heart was. And he knew exactly how to feed it so that we would not find salvation. And yet, in the mercy of God, in the love of God, and in the beauty of God, we found you. <clears throat> we found the answer that we were looking for. We, were, we found what uh, Andre Crouch penned way back in 1969 when he wrote the song, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other Jesus is the way. However it happened, Lord, in my situation, for example, when my friend Dwayne Toshford came to me and Perry Johnson, and I had been their friends for a couple of years, and they, this was, you know, uh, when I was in grade 12 and <clears throat> was preparing to head off to Sate to become a radio announcer. And they said to me, you know, there's a young people's um, meeting that's happening in Haver, Montana. And I think that you'd like it. I said, why would I want to go? They said, because of girls. Now, when you're 17 years old and running on hormones, of course, the idea of meeting girls is a perfect uh, approach and launching point. Funny thing was, Lord, that weekend, I didn't find a girl, but I did find you. And I'm so grateful for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so grateful for the fact that, Lord, you came into my life and I found exactly what Dwayne, or I should say, uh, Paul talked about and Jesus talked about. Lord, I remember that Saturday morning in 1974, and it was the weekend of Thanksgiving. And I remember specifically when the guy stood there and said, You've tried everything else. Why don't you try Jesus? Lord, it was like he was reading my mail at the time. Of course, he was reading my mail because, Lord, you were revealing your, my, you were revealing to me my heart, 
and my need of a savior. All I remember, Lord, is this. I stood by a tree in Havard, Montana, in the center part of the city. <clears throat> and I remember specifically, I didn't know how to pray, didn't know what to say. I just said, Lord Jesus, if you're real, come into my heart. Father, I've never been the same since. Hasn't been always a rose garden, but I would, every day, I'm grateful that I got saved. Who knows where I would have been? Who knows what I would have done? Who knows who I would have hurt? Lord, you gave me eternal and abundant life, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm grateful that today I get to pray. I get to invite people to pray with me and to understand the power of united prayer. Lord, when we give our hearts entirely to you, something happens to us, Lord. We get healed. In that moment, Lord, we find that wonderful salvation, and it begins to heal us from the inside out. And it changes us, Lord, so beautifully and so wonderfully. We get healed. And then the outgrowth of that is that, Lord, we begin to trust again. And we begin to love again in the manner that you would have us love. Because we know that, Lord, if we don't love the way that you want us to love, and this is incredible thought, to actually go through life and not produce anything of real value. We often think that chasing after possessions or creating a family and promoting the human race is the ultimate goal. And it's not. The ultimate goal is to live a life centered on God. Jesus told us that he came to give us life and give it to us abundantly. Paul, I should say, John reiterated that in 3 John 2 when he was talking to the lady and he said, listen, I pray that you be in prosperity and health even as your soul prospers. Lord, it was Gordon McDonald who said we needed to order our private world. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we're asking, Lord, that this prosperity and health that John was talking about <clears throat> would be distributed in our life situation and that we would have exactly what the Word of God says that we should have. Father, we know that there's an old song that says every promise in the book is mine. Every chapter, every verse, every line. I'm sitting in grace divine. Every promise in the book is mine. Lord, that's what we want to see happen today. And so we've chosen to do just that. Heal us, Lord, that we can love others. And then Paul puts it so beautifully again in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Now, it's interesting that he was encouraging people to look at the mercy of God. It is that divine ability to look at us and see not what we are right now, but what we shall become. You see, we're supposed to grow in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ every single day. And we have that opportunity. Now, Lord, some of us, some days, we grow at an amazing rate. And people can dramatically see it. And then there are other times where it seems like the turtle in the, in the uh, poem or the fairy tale or the fable of, you know, one step at a time. It's like the song says, one step at a time, sweet Jesus. That's all I'm asking from you. Lord, however that happens, that's what we need to see happen. Now, mercies of God, we're presenting our bodies to you as a living sacrifice. Lord, listen, my will, my intellect, my emotions, my past, my present, my future. Lord, my time, my talents, resources, I'm giving them to you. Because, Lord, that's reasonable. And that's spiritual service. That's spiritual worship. Worship is an attitude of the heart expressed. Praise is thanking you for what you've done. So, Lord, I praise you for what you've done. The great and marvelous salvation that you have given me and the privilege of actually being able to pray for people, to ask you to divinely intervene in their life situation. Lord, I don't want anyone 
to not have an abundant or purposeful life. Lord, I, I believe with every fiber of our being that, Lord, every one of us has a divine purpose, that every one of us has a divine direction. And that's why we're asking what we're asking, Lord, today, that we would have that divine intervention, that divine touch, that divine ministry of God right now. No if, no ands, no buts, no maybe. That's what we want to see happen, Lord. Lord, now, what I want to do is I don't want to conform to the images and standards of this world any longer. Lord, I want to ask for your forgiveness right now. We all have weeks where, Lord, we're not where we should be, doing the things we should be doing, thinking the things that we are thinking, words and actions and attitudes that, Lord, well, they, they seem contrary to the nature of God in working in our lives. There are some days where, Lord, we're just right on. We're hitting all eight cylinders. Sometimes we feel like we're a, a Model T. Put, 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 put. Other days, we're a muscle car. Room, yeah, I'm right on, Jesus. <laughs> Lord, whatever that day is today, thank you. We're not conforming to the images or standards of the world. We're not going to allow pleasure, possession, and pride get a hold of us. We're just not going to let that happen. Father, we need to know you. And we need to know you in your full power and your full presence. And Lord, with that, we don't want to conform. We want to be transformed. Lord, right now, would you take every thought and create in us, Lord, a strong thought, that the strong thought is you. You are the one that we want to think on. It's like what Paul said in Philippians chapter 4. What sort of things are right and holy and praiseworthy and virtuous, just and honest, true and lovely. These are the things that we want to think on today. Lord, as we think, so we shall become. That's why we need to pray the good thoughts. That's why we need to focus on you. And we're doing that right now in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, what is the perfect and acceptable will of God? Number one, to go into our world and bring the gospel. Now, Father, in regards to that, that's why we're praying today. Because, Lord, we want people to join us and become part of us. And in just a moment, I'm going to pray for that. But, Lord, secondly, we want to do and walk in love today. Jesus said people will know that we are his disciples by the way that we love one another. We know that love has boundaries. We know that love is a decision. We know that love is something that produces a value in our lives. When we love, when we have truly found the source of love, and that communicated attribute of God that comes into our life situation and changes us. Lord, that's what we want to see happen today. I'm so tired of the mediocrity. I'm so tired of the mundane. I'm so tired, Lord, of, of missing the mark. I don't want to miss the mark in this prayer time. I want this throne, I want this prayer to go right to the throne of heaven. Lord, I think in my mind of a man or a woman, I'm thinking of Esther. Esther knew after Mordecai had told her about the decree. And Mordecai, I said to her, listen, just because you're in the house <clears throat> or in the palace, don't think that Haman's decree won't reach you. Because once they find out who you are, you're dead. He says, but listen, maybe, just maybe, you were raised up for a time such as this. Lord, to think that the next thing that Esther did was she told that Mordecai, he says, what you need to do is get all the Jews to pray. You need to have them fast for the next three days, and we'll do the same. And then at the end of three days, I will go. And I will present myself to the king. And if I perish, I perish. Lord, 
She was raised up for a time such as this. She was willing to lay her life down on the line for the sake of her people. It was interesting how Esther went about it. She said, listen, I would love for you and Haman to come to dinner with me. Haman got all excited because he thought, oh my goodness, I have been just elevated to the highest echelons of, of society. I mean, let's face it, to go to a personal intimate dinner with the king and with Esther, the queen, wow, that's marvelous. Little did he know that God had a plan. Lord, thank you today that you have a plan. And thank you that, Lord, you have a work of deliverance going on. Lord, today, that's what we're praying for our churches, that our churches will be houses of prayer and houses of deliverance. Jesus said, you've turned my house into a house of iniquity and of commerce when it's supposed to be a house of prayer. Father, that's what we want to do today. So, Lord, right now, there are people that belong to Cornerstone Community Church where I pastor. People that belong to me, and I am declaring today that they are released right now in Jesus' name. Based on that, Lord, we have not because we ask not. I'm asking. Now, I'm speaking directly to the north, the south, the east, and the west. I'm speaking to the four different directions. And I'm telling you that right now, in Jesus' name, That God is going to give us a victory. That God is going to pour out his spirit upon us. That God is going to bring such a marvelous, marvelous touch of God. Father, we are thanking you today for that. We are thanking that, Lord, out of the north and south and east and west, those that belong to us are going to be released right now. No if, no ands, no buts, no maybes about it. They are going to be released right now. They belong to us. And I am declaring by faith that they are coming. Lord, you open up the windows of heaven. You bring that blessing right now in Jesus' name. Lord, no throne, dominion, or authority, principality, power, ruler, or spiritual host is going to stop what you are going to do. In this moment, we are going to see your great and marvelous deliverance. Lord, I'm speaking to all worldly forces and human agents. Listen to me. You are not going to stop what God wants to do. There are no if. No ends, no buts, no maybes about it. I don't care who you are. I don't care what power you possess or you think you possess. I know this. Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ defeated you on the cross, and that's what I'm standing on. James 4, 7 says, if I resist you after I've submitted to God, which I have, you have to flee. It's that simple. But right now, in Jesus' name, Lord, I'm going to ask something of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, would you go to the north and south and east and west? And would you bring to me the people that belong to me right now in Jesus' name? Would you speak to them, Lord, right now? And would you set them free right now? in this moment. Lord God, that's what I'm praying for today. That's what I'm standing on right now in this moment. I'm asking that Lord right now, and I'm going to ask this, from every city and town, village and hamlet and settlement, every state, territory, canon and county, and also as well province. I'm asking for unsaved loved ones, and man, that they need to be saved. And that promise, of course, is that not only shall we be saved, but our household as well. Lord, we're praying for that right now. That, Lord, our wonderful Christian brothers and sisters and Pentecostal experience are disenfranchised. Those that, Lord, know about you and know you, but won't darken the doors of a church. We're praying for them today. Holy Ghost, speak to them that when this prayer 
which is uttered right now, it will penetrate their hearts and they will want to come. There's going to be a hunger, a thirst, a desperation, a compulsion to come to the house of God. That's what we're praying for today. Lord, they're going to be backsliders. Lord, there's so many people out there who knew you at one time, and you told us in the book of Jeremiah that you are married to the backslider. Lord, you want them back. You love them. They knew the goodness of God at one time, but for whatever reason, they've turned aside from that, and now they're heading to hell in the handbasket. We need to pray for them. We need to stand in the gap for them right now. We got to call those things which are not as if they are, because Lord, they need to be saved. And then, of course, thousands, millions. In fact, Gary Tatinger said me, sent me, and to all of us, Lord, an email, telling us that in the province of Alberta and also as well the territories, there are 4.1 million people, Lord, who need to be saved. Now, Lord, of course, there are cities that are much larger than that. But Lord, I'm not. I don't live in Calcutta. I don't live in Cairo. I don't live in Lagos. I don't live in Mexico City. I live in Edmonton. And I pastor in St. Albert. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in all these other centers. But I am praying for those 4.1 million people that live in my province and the territories. Lord, I'm praying for them right now. And I'm asking you to release them. So using the geographical location of where I am living right now, children, young people, young adults, young families, families with teenagers, empty nesters, male and female, young and old, Lord, we're releasing them right now. Northern St. Albert, Northern Alberta, Edmonton. We're going now to Nunavut, Northwest Territories, the Yukon, Alaska, Russia, Scandinavia, the Baltic countries, Northern Europe, Great Britain, Ireland, Greenland, and Iceland. We're calling them right now to the south, Southern St. Albert, into Edmonton, Central and South Alberta, United States and Mexico, Lord, the Caribbean islands, Central and South America, as far south as Antarctica, as far north as Greece, Lord, Father, we're calling them today. We're making a declaration of faith. We're calling those things which are not as if they are. Father, we're breaking the spiritual hindrances right now. The blockages, the chains, the fetters, the walls, whatever they're called, I don't care. What I do care is that they're going to get common. Now, to the east, of course, eastern St. Albert, eastern Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, Quebec, Prince Edward Island, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, Newfoundland, islands, the ocean, African Europe. Lord, there are two continents to the east of me, Africa and Europe. There are billions of people that belong to them. And I'm calling them as far west as Jerusalem, as far east as Jerusalem, using Jerusalem as a, as a focal point. Lord, please. I'm asking you to release them right now. Then, of course, to the West, Western St. Albert, Western Albert, United States and Mexico, heading into um, the Yukon, British Columbia, Alaska, Russia, Scandinavia. Lord, we're calling them right now from the 23,000 islands of the Pacific, Northern and Southern New Zealand, Tasmania, Australia, Philippines, Pau Pau, New Guinea, Indonesia. Lord, that's the largest Muslim country in the world. Lord, we're calling them from Japan and Taiwan, China and Indochina, Korea. And Lord, I think about the fact that there are over 250 million Christians in the country of China. One in five is serving you. Lord, we want to see them here. We want to see them in our churches. We want to see people from the Philippines. Then, of course, Lord, we're calling them from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Lord, Afghanistan. Father, just in these countries alone, we're talking pretty close to almost, you know, 1.8 billion people. Lord, that's what we're praying for. We got to have a breakthrough. We got to have it. Lord, I'm calling people who love to pray. Man, oh man, we need people who love to pray. We need people who are able to fight in the area of prayer. Those intercessors, those warriors, Lord, those individuals that have been called into prayer. They set up prayer rooms. They set up war rooms and say, okay, God, now I want to see a breakthrough. And they're not 
willing to let go. They're kind of like the hound dogs of heaven. They're like the pit bulls and say, you know what? I'm going to jump. I'm going to sink my jaws onto this thing and I'm going to stay on this, Lord, like a bone. And I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. That's what we need in our churches today. We also need people who love the Word of God. Lord, I think of the fact that, for example, we have the Bereans. Now, the, the people of Thessalonica, they weren't as noble as the people of Berea. And what am I talking about? The difference was simple. The people of Berea were noble because they checked out everything that Paul said based upon the Word of God. They said, thus saith the word of the Lord. They weren't the people of Eli, where, you know, the word of God was rare. They loved the word. And we got to love the word. Father, I pray for a hunger and thirst and a desperation among people today of the word of God. So many people today, Lord, are basically Bible illiterate. They think they know what the Bible says. I talked to a guy last week who was a Satanist. He says, I know what the Bible says. No, you don't. You may have read it once, but you don't know because you don't have the illumination. You don't know the Lord. How can you possibly look at that book? You don't know the Lord. You don't have a relationship with God. You don't have eternal and abundant life. You don't know it. You're lying to yourself and you're lying to me. I, said, I should have said that. No, you don't. You don't know what the book says. It's a closed book to you. That which is flesh is flesh, and that which is spirit is spirit. Only the Spirit of God can take that and make it open to you. Otherwise, you look at it through your own lens. You don't look through it through an eternal lens. You're not born again. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Father, today, I know it sounds like I'm pontificating, but Lord, it is so many people who say to me, I know what the Bible says. No, you don't. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't know what the book says because the book is through your own lens and not through the lens of God. And Father, that's what we're praying for today, is that people will be able to see it through the lens of the Holy Spirit, through the, ro through the rose-colored glasses, if I may say that. You don't know what the book says. Father, I pray that people will come to know you, and there'll be noble people, and there'll be people of the book. Thirdly, I release people who love to give. Father, we need people we, we've just come through a pandemic, two years of this. And Father, we still have residue dealing with that. We go through a contraction, and then we go through a time of expansion where we are right now. But we're getting ready for another contraction. Lord, we know that life is an ebb and flow situation. There's a time of feast. There is a time of famine. When the time of famine is on, you you hunker down and you, you become moderate. When you have a time of feast, you put things away because you know that famine is coming. We can learn so much from the ants and the squirrels because what they do is they gather during the summer season. Because they know that winter is coming. They know that there will be a cold stretch. And that's what we need to do, Lord. We need to recognize that we're in maybe right now a time of famine or feast. Either way, Lord, bring people into our church who can give. Bring us people who love to serve. Father, that's what I'm praying for today. People who love to serve. People who just absolutely love to get involved and serve. That's what we're praying for. Also as well, Lord, we're praying today that people will love to help us, Lord, to maintain our buildings. Lord, I need a building. It's as simple as that. I need a building. So send me someone who can make that happen. Lord, send someone who loves to worship the Lord. You know, I, I, I think of David. David was a man after God's own heart. He loved to worship. He loved to say, I was glad when they said, let us go to the house of the Lord. He said, I would rather be a doorkeeper at the house of God than any other location. David was like Joshua. Joshua never left the house of God. 
He enjoyed the presence of the Lord. He enjoyed the residue of God. Lord, we got to be that way too. We got to lift up our holy hands without wrath and without malice. Lord, make us people who, Lord, love to worship. And make us people, Lord, who love to be of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, what we're asking of you today is this. Would you come upon us? Would you give us not just tongues, interpretation, prophecy, faith, healing, miracles, word of words, word of knowledge, discernment, but Lord, would you exhibit out of our lives love and joy and peace and kindness and goodness and faithfulness, patience and self-control? Would you do that today? We want to exhibit those things in our lives because we recognize that without them, Lord, we can't do anything. Finally today, Lord, I want to pray for a generation. Last time I was together, Lord, I prayed for household salvation. But today, I just want to pray for the Josephs. I want to pray for those individuals, wherever they may be. You see, David, I should say, Joseph may have at one time been a prince among the Hebrews, one of the top boys. But when he went into captivity, whether it was in Potiphar's house or became a prisoner in the home, or I should say in the judgment or the jail of Pharaoh, you were with him and you prospered him. And then when the time was right, and oh God, we thank you for the timing of the Lord. Esther discovered that as we talked about before. And Lord, so did Joseph. In one day, Lord, you arranged a circumstance where he went from prisoner to prime minister. That was absolutely marvelous. When I think of Esther, who was able to navigate the time in which he lives, and Mordecai, who absolutely refused to bow down to Haman, the sinister minister. Lord, that was wonderful. Also as well, Lord, Daniel. Oh, I love Daniel. Daniel chose to not eat from the king's table, even though he was given. And that, that's such a, a wonderful parallel. Lord, so many times we are offered things from the king's table, but Lord, it is not what we should be eating from. It was, of course, uh, Mike Warnke that said, pig slop is pig slop, whether it is from a silver chalice or from a Tupperware bowl. Lord, it's still the same thing. Daniel knew what was going on. And he said, I am not going to do that. Such wisdom though, Lord, when he went to talk to the steward, to the keeper. And he said, test me for 10 days, me and my friends, and see if we're not better. And of course he did. And they, the, the rest of the story, Daniel, when they went to try and to accuse him of something, they couldn't find anything. Lord, that's why Jesus said, live blameless in this world. Father, that's what we want to do. We want to live blameless lives in this world that will make such a dynamic impact on those that come into contact with us. Daniel then, along with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but in particular, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, or Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Father, either way, these boys told Nebuchadnezzar, listen, we can't bow down to that image. It goes completely against contrary to our religion. And he gets all mad and blows up and puts them into the fire. And the fourth man in the fire, which we have identified as Jesus Christ, because it was uh, um, Daniel's uh, Nebuchadnezzar who said, that guy's looking like the son of God. What a beautiful picture. If we're finding ourselves in the fire today, it's hot and it's smoky. Lord, we're relying on the fourth man in the fire. That's what we're doing today. We're relying on the Lord today. Father, would you do that today? Would you make that happen for your praise and for your glory? And Lord, we're also praying today that we'll be able, like the men of Issachar, be able to discern the times in which we live. We got to know that, Lord. We know that there are ebbs and flows, and we know that right now the days of political correctness are all upon us, and the revisionists are out there trying to rewrite history. You know, the thing about history is you can't change it. 
You can sit there and try to revise it, but it ain't going to happen because history is history. It's done. Paul said, I forget the past. I'm looking forward to the future. Lord, all we can do is learn from our past. We can't change it. And we can't keep compensating people because of it. Father, we're praying today that you will bring revival. Lord, there's a Billy Graham out there. I think of Ruth Graham lots who told everybody, Dad, you're gone by the way, but we're offering our services. We're standing in the, we're, 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 we want to become you. Lord, there's a Catherine Kuhlman out there. There's an Esther, a Mordecai. Lord, whatever they are and whoever they are, I want to close with this. Daniel 11.32 said, In the last days, which we are in right now, it says that they will know their God. Father, that's my prayer today, that each one of us will know who you are and know what you want in our life situation. That's what I'm praying for today. I'm praying that, Lord, today we would know you. Not know about you, but actually know you in your resurrection power to understand what you have done, how your death and burial and resurrection gave us eternal and abundant life, how that through your broken body and shed blood, we have all the victories of God right now. Thank you for that. And thank you, Lord, for your wonderful, fantastic, absolutely glorious love. We just want to thank you for that. Also as well, Lord, thank you that today, Lord, in this moment, we've called those things which are not as if they were. And Father, thank you today that you're going to pour out your Spirit upon us. Joel 2.28 is going to come. It's going to happen tomorrow. Lord, I just want to remind you something that I always say. Status quo is not acceptable. Where we are right now, I don't want to be. I want the fullness of God. And Lord, I'm asking that for myself. I'm asking that for my family. I'm asking that for my marriage. I'm certainly asking it for the church that I pastor, Cornerstone. I've offered Cornerstone and I'm offering it to you again. Lord, please, please bring Cornerstone and make it the church that you have always wanted it to be. Not what it is right now, but what you intended it to be. I've called those things which are not as if they are. I've prayed with you. I've pleaded with you. Over the years, Lord, I have done everything I can. But I'm so grateful. Lord, I'm not going to complain, not for one single moment. You can't change what happened. But we can change today through the power of united prayer. Lord, two or three have gathered together, and we've prayed. For the last 44 minutes, Lord, we've just met with you. We've asked you, Lord, to divinely intervene in our situation. We've asked you, Lord, to pour out your spirit upon us and bring that victory. And that's what we're believing for today, Lord. That's what we're asking for today. Like Jacob of old, we're putting a headlock on you, Lord, and we're saying, I ain't letting you go until you bless me. Lord, there are giants that are standing in the way, Goliaths. There are mountains. But Father, through your power, through your presence, through your reality, every single one are becoming a plain. Lord, thank you for that. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, again, I would love to have you join us for our service on Sunday. If you're in the greater Edmonton area, I would ask you to come to Cornerstone Community Church. We meet at Cornerstone Hall, number 6 Tache Street in St. Albert, and we would love to have you join us for what our service. It opens up at 1045. Our service starts at 11 a.m. And just one final thing. If you like what you've been hearing, then please press the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. My name is Robert Dean Steele. You have yourself a great and godly day. And thank you for joining me for this time and place of prayer.